Hey guys, Guy Level here, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to make good clickable thumbnails. Now, whether you're a live streamer or just a normal YouTuber, making good thumbnails is very, very important because it can be the deciding factor on whether or not someone is going to click on your content. So my goal with this video is to teach you about all the tactics that you can use in order to get your content clicked on. We're going to be talking about the psychology behind it. We're going to be talking about focus, contrast, and all that good stuff. Now, real quickly, since I mentioned live stream and most of my audience, most of my subscribers are live streamers, know that on Twitch, for example, you can add custom thumbnails to your VODs. Just go to your video producer, click edit your VOD, and then upload a custom thumbnail. So this is not a YouTube exclusive tutorial. Okay, but before we get into that, the first thing that we need to understand is niche. You need to understand exactly who you are making the thumbnails for. Because I can tell you about all the different types of thumbnails that will get you clicks, but I don't know what type of content you make. Only you know that. So you need to do your research and go basically look at the top content creators in your niche and look at what they're putting in their thumbnails. Basically, what is the appeal of thumbnails in your specific niche? Now, of course, with my subscribers, I know the appeal is mostly gaming. So we're going to be looking at that and then we might even recreate one. So I'm going to go in the trending tab. I know you guys hate the trending tab. I'm going to click on gaming. Of course, we're going to get the classic Fortnite reaction Ali Ali A. What was his name? <laughs> of course, we're going to get that. The thing is, when it comes to younger audiences, a uh, strong reaction really connects with them because they're pretty much expecting the person to react to that now why are reactions important why are reaction channels even a thing in the first place turns out our brains are pattern detecting machines and one of the most uh, pleasant patterns not necessarily pleasant but one of the patterns that we really love subconsciously to identify is the human face and the human face making certain emotion expressing certain emotions now surprise is a big one because you're immediately expecting to have something shocking happening in the video that's the expectation and that's how it becomes some sort of clickbait especially when it comes to a younger audience so if you have a young audience you should definitely be be doing this but i will definitely say that just having a human face in your thumbnail will absolutely help we're going to talk about focus a little bit later but let's focus on this this let's focus on this human face part if you don't have a human face when it comes to gaming you can put a character you can put uh drawings for example but in pretty much all of those thumbnails something that you will see is a face that's weird right no it's not it's it's something that is proven to to captivate people so a face here uh, this is a minecraft character but that's a face you know a bunch of faces here a face a face that is considered a face a drawing a drawn face uh, that's Markiplier's face, Minecraft character, drawing of faces. If you don't show your face, for example, because if you put your face in a thumbnail and then we never see your face in a video, that's not good. What you want is to have your face only if you actually show your face in the video. And if not, you can show the face of one major character of that video game. And then we'll talk about more focus a little bit later, but let's continue a little bit on that face thing. Of course, you know, NBA 2K20, big clickbait, big mouth open, huge reaction. You can even, even if you have a reaction like that, you know, who's that guy? Cypher PK? I've never heard of him, but even a reaction like that still counts, still actually works better than if the thumbnail was all of this without the face. There's usually multiple parts to a thumbnail like that, especially when it comes to gaming, you will have subject, text, and then face, okay? The face could be the subject. For example, if you don't have your own human face and you wanna put a character, that could be the subject. And then all you have to put is text. One thing that you really need to keep in mind is that the thumbnail has to be as simple as possible, simply because of the size. It's gonna be small, okay? So don't think big, don't try to put a thousand details in there. The goal is for it to be pretty small and readable. So this is where we're gonna talk about contrast. Now, for example, Courage here, in order to add some con contrast, between him, the text, and the the image from Fortnite season two, you'll see that he has this glowing thing around him, right? You can put a, you can add a like a, a outline, a stroke, people call it, or you can just make it glow. That will help separate you from the background. Something that I read in an article is that having bright colors as your background also helps. 
but I guess, well, I guess we're doing gaming, so that will actually help too. So bright backgrounds, you can put a glow or an outline or both. You can put drop shadows, for example, in a text. That white, if it was on that bright yellow in the middle, it wouldn't be as visible, etc. But anyways, that's enough talking. Let's get to making our own thumbnail and I can teach you the process. So here I am going to be using Photoshop, but the goal here is not to, it's not a Photoshop tutorial. It's basically I'm teaching you the principles so that you can apply that to whatever program you're using to make your thumbnails. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is the aspect ratio of a thumbnail is usually 16 by nine, just like your normal full HD image. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a canvas that's um, 1920 by 1080. Now, in case you're showing your face, you're going to want to take a picture having a reaction or not having a reaction. If you're using a screenshot from the video itself where you actually had a reaction, that's completely fine. You can do that too. Do not be too crazy about the quality of the picture because once again, the thumbnails are smaller. Okay, they're going to show up pretty small. No one's going to see your thumbnail full screen. So I'm importing this old picture of me. Basically, this is how you would want to pose if you're going to, you know, take a picture for the thumbnail. Always when you're recording your video, you want to think about the thumbnail. And if you don't, it's OK to basically make a little photo shoot of yourself just doing reactions. Okay, I have a whole album of just pictures of me that I can use uh, whenever I want for any video if I'm if I'm not in the mood to take a picture that day. But then again, you can just take a screenshot of your video. So I'm going to make this as big as possible. Again, we don't want to put too much detail. So there's a lot that we're actually going to take out here. All right. The advantages that I have is that I'm using a DSLR. So the background is kind of blurry. This is something that you would probably want to do to your picture. If the background is not blurry, you can darken it. You can make it blurry just by applying a simple mask in order to get more contrast. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to completely uh, cut myself off of the background. All right. I'm going to be using the pen tool to do that. And I don't need to be precise at all. It really doesn't matter here. Thumbnail is going to be small. Details are not going to show. OK. OK, now that I cut myself from the background, we have a huge advantage here is that with our white background, basically we solve we already solved the contrast problem when it comes to the text, because if you want to put the text on the image, you're going to have to find a color that really contrasts. And, and since the image is going to be like that small, it's going to be hard to read if we, we still had that, uh, you know, that purple background. Let's say if I wanted purple text here, um, it would be an issue. But now that we have a mask, we can choose whatever color we want for the background in order to contrast it with the text. So let's pick a color for the background. Now, of course, if you want things to match perfectly or if you want things to look good, you may want to look up color combinations. Uh, or you can just get inspired by your favorite game. If you're playing Apex, you know, they have that red, white design. So you might want to keep it. But it also has to do with your own branding, too. In that case, I have that purple. So dark background, bright text, right? So we're going to add the text. So, of course, when it comes to text, you don't want anything that is too crazy when it comes to the font. I know people love cool fonts and stuff, but the goal here is to make it readable. So use a simple font that even at this size, I can read perfectly. What you need here is to convey your message as clearly as possible. There's a bunch of effects, for example, here on on in Photoshop or any other program that you can add just to make that text stand out even more. For example, right here, I have drop drop shadow bottom right, and that will create a shadow around my text. The font right now is Arial Black. I'm going to change that, but I'm still going to keep some sort of bold font that is easily readable. That is an Avenger type font. This is actually what I use for my own thumbnails. I always one rule that I use personally is I always try to keep my thumbnails, my uh, text to be big, at least half of the screen. In this case, we have some space up top, so we're going to keep it more than half. But I always try to have my text be at least half of the screen. Always try to keep a low number of words, okay? A low count of words. You don't want a paragraph in there. Remember, you have your subject and that's what you want to highlight. If the highlight of the thing is a new season of a video game, this is what you want them to see. And I can use a screenshot from my gameplay or just find one off of Google. Something that I like to do, if, especially if it has to do with gaming, if you're gonna use like a screenshot or you're announcing like a new game, I would, Get that image first in order to know what I'm going to make the whole rest of the thumbnail look like, basically. 
but in that case we did it in reverse we added my picture we added the text and now we're looking for the image and uh yes i specifically chose this because it matched it matches the grade that i got so this is a second face that's going to be in the image so i want it to be quite quite big now as i said since we're using apex we kind of want to remind people that this has to do with apex basically people are familiar with the apex logo so you might want to use uh, the apex logo or at least the colors something to remind people hey this is this has to do with apex right okay now we're getting more elements on screen so we want to push things over in order to fit the, the screen correctly we're gonna make that even bigger right here another technique you can use for the text is putting a um a background basically to a specific part of the text so right here, I have the white text still matches the apex colors ish, but I'm going to create a rectangle around it because we kind of have that style here. You know, for season four, they have that style. So we're going to recreate this. Okay. And if we feel like uh, the new season text doesn't stand out much because the gray in that particular shade of red doesn't really stand out, we can add a stroke to it an outline, if you will. And now that's very like that really pops out. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about contrast and focus, basically. So the contrast is really on that new season and first look text now just because of the drop shadow the stroke and uh, the color contrast right if i had uh, um, a red background if i put a red background for example here now um it would not be as as good if i do this then it's it's not as it doesn't stand out as much remember it's going to be like that and see here you can't even begin to to read what it says Okay, we're back here and uh, I'm going to add a stroke to myself. Now, the other technique that we saw Courage use was uh, an outer glow that usually puts the focus on you more. So you add outer glow and then you're going to bump up the size and basically it's going to make you glow. You can lower the opacity. You don't want to overdo this. You can also give that a color. For example, you can give that the same red color. Um, so that adds even more color scheme, white, red and dark gray basically now what i'm gonna do for this is not something that i advise you doing because i'm guessing you're not gonna have the same issue for the color but i'm gonna try to change that pink into red in order to just match the thumbnail and uh here we're gonna add some sort of uh, gradient in the background just to give even more of that red and establish that color scheme okay you can make a couple of things a little wacky you can We'll take this a little bit now if you have some sort of branding that you keep consistent over all of your thumbnails which is that is very important too um this is the part where you you will you would probably add it so i've seen people had like a, a sidebar sidebar is very recognizable we're definitely in the zone of adding a little bit too much let's say that your sidebar would have i don't know your logo your name whatever you have and that's your and that's just your branding i'm just making a makeshift logo real fast <laughs> imagining that a youtuber has this logo and that's their branding and they would put that sidebar on every thumbnail just so you know oh that's that's their video basically okay it's not that bad i'm gonna move this make it a little less invasive boom there you go now that looks like a thumbnail that you would see of course the words are just placeholders and and random uh, you would put whatever the subject is there but that is that is the the big idea now in the case where you don't have your face it would be even simpler basically and that's it <laughs> that's it you would use a character from the game and uh it would take your place basically if your face doesn't show if you don't want to show your face some people push it even further in order to captivate the attention even more they would add a little detail on top of the character that makes your brain go wait that's not right but it would i don't know put googly eyes or deform the face a little bit uh, in photoshop for example you can use the liquify tool and that is a well-known te technique to basically get the attention of the viewer scrolling by and make them click they're like what what is this Boom. And that thumbnail will be more clickable than someone who had put just the, the normal character. If I control Z, instead of putting this, you put that, you'll get more clicks. I guarantee you will get more clicks because that captivates attention even more. If there's something that the human brain detects faster than the human face is when something is wrong with said 
human face. Now, obviously, I just rushed through this for the sake of the tutorial. For your own thumbnails, you would want to spend more time and being a little more precise with things. But the goal here is to show the idea behind making certain types of thumbnails, especially when it comes to gaming. So the first step is doing a little bit of research, looking at what are other people in my niche doing, then thinking about the color scheme. Are you sticking to the same thumbnail type or are you sticking to your own color scheme or will you adopt uh, the color scheme of the game to make it more recognizable? If so, what type of branding are you going to be using? Will you put your logo in there or not? Most importantly, faces, faces, faces everywhere. How to use your own face, how to use faces in the game. Um, Keep in mind that this advice doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. It's nothing universal. It's just, hey, this has been proven to increase uh, clicks on thumbnails. So hey, I'm sharing it. I don't always use the same type of thumbnail every time, but I don't do gaming content. Really, I do tutorials, you know, so I will do I will do tech reviews. So in my tech review videos, I will have the tech as the main focus. Anyways, let me know if any of what I said made sense to you. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you are looking for some dope overlays, uh, please go to gumroad.com slash get level. I have a bunch of them recently put out a bunch of stinger transitions for free. You can get them over there at gumroad.com slash get level. When it comes to the merch store, I recently added posters to, well, to all the merch that you can get streamer brain merch. So check that out. There will be a link in the description as well. If you guys have any tutorial requests, leave them in the comment section below too. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Go out there, make me proud, but I'm not your dad. Get level out. <laughs>